Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a study that was able to investigate the technically most invisible part of our universe, the area known as Zona Galactica Incognita. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So here on Earth, um, when you think about the most invisible part of the universe, you're not probably going to be thinking about what I'm about to show you. I guess in some sense it's very difficult for us to see what's right behind the sun. As a matter of fact, if this is Earth right here, the area right behind of the sun is technically invisible to us, which is why it served as a kind of a story plot for many different science fiction books. Now, um, that's not really what we're talking about, because we have seen that side using various telescopes that were sent over the years. However, there are parts of the um, universe that are, well, practically invisible to us. And although technically the farthest reaches of the universe do qualify as those invisible areas, we're talking about something a lot closer to home. So here, the area that I'm about to show you, that's essentially right there in the center of the Milky Way, behind the central bulge is kind of invisible to us. The amount of dust and the amount of actual material facing us here prevents us from seeing what's behind. We don't really have a good picture of what might be uh, behind all of this uh, dust, behind all of these stars and obviously behind the central black hole. And so we've named this area Zona Galactica Incognita. In other words, a known galaxy zone. And it, it's a pretty um, solid name, because if you were to look at the galaxy from the top, with Earth being selected right there on the bottom, right behind the bulge right there, this whole chunk of the galaxy is technically just simulated. We don't really know what stars are there, we have no idea if there are any uh, major black holes or major pulsars or really anything. The vast amounts of dust and all of this gas that you see right here all of this is so good at preventing us from discovering what's beyond that um, we didn't really hope to find it for quite a while. But um, it just so happens that certain parts of light spectrum can get through this dust cloud, and specifically certain uh, parts of infrared light. And so by collecting various infrared light that's coming from those regions of the galaxy, we've eventually collected enough data to be able to analyze it and to be able to kind of see through and potentially discover certain stars. And it just so happens that today we've advanced so much in the area of artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning that several algorithms exist that allow us to quickly discover stars in gigabytes and terabytes of various data that we can throw at it. And so that's kind of what the scientists behind this paper that was recently published uh, decided to do. They took an algorithm that's usually known as CNN or Convolutional Neural Network and they threw all of this data at it, trained it and uh, let it learn to recognize what certain types of stars looked like. And then by collecting all of the data from the hidden region um, of our galaxy, they were able to discover over a thousand different stars we didn't really know existed. And the types of stars they've selected are the so-called Cepheid variables about which I've talked about previously. These are stars that are really well known to us. Um, we are kind of dependent on them because these are pulsating stars. That's what they do, literally. They increase in size and increase in luminosity and then decrease in size, decrease in luminosity. In other words, they kind of like breathe in a sense. And by doing this breathing, and also because they're doing this with a very specific pattern, we can usually use them to determine distances in space. So this is kind of how we discover distances to nearby galaxies, for example. Here's one example from the Andromeda galaxy, uh, and you can see that as it changes color, and as it does so periodically, we can usually determine its maximum luminosity. And by using that, we can then determine the distance to the star very, very precisely. And that's because there is a very direct relationship between how bright they get and also how often they change their luminosity. So by using these relationships, we can usually very precisely determine distances. And uh, by finding thousands of these objects, or just over a thousand technically, the scientists behind this paper for the first time ever were able to very precisely point at where these stars were located 
and thus show us in some sense what the shape of the galaxy on the other side, on the dark side was. Now the dark side, or I guess the far side of our galaxy, hides a lot of mysteries and specifically related to the number of potential arms, galactic arms, but also um, we don't really know if there are any warps there or not. Like for example, if we were to look at a typical spiral galaxy, this is a simulation of the Milky Way galaxy, we know that they have spiral arms and we know that uh, some of them are symmetric but some of them are not. Some galaxies have disturbed or broken arms and some of them might even have tons of arms that uh, we didn't account for. Or maybe there are only um, arms on one side, whereas the other side was either disrupted or has some kind of a break, or even uh, a sign of a collision. And so all of this is really interesting to us because it will allow us to understand how our galaxy evolved over time, what collisions with other galaxies it may have experienced, and by studying the dark side we can also pinpoint the variations in dark matter, the interactions with dark matter, we might even discover um, more unusual mysteries, strange supernovas, strange black holes, or strange pulsars that we've never seen before. Now, obviously, we don't we don't really know what's there yet, but this is a good start by being able to combine the infrared light that does get through the uh, unusually thick dust clouds that we have here, and then taking the um, artificial intelligence or the machine learning algorithms that are already really well established and quite uh, well understood, we can definitely discover a lot more things out there that we didn't really know existed. Now apart from discovering uh, the locations of these stars, uh, that is a pretty good discovery already, the scientists behind this paper were also able to discover the ages of these different stars. They realized that the Cepheid variables on the dark side, or on the far side um, technically, uh, were actually youngest closer to the center. So younger stars were closer, older stars were a lot farther. And this is reflective of what we have on our side. So technically, in that sense, the distribution of Cepheid variables is more or less the same. Now, we don't really know if there is any difference, but in a sense, maybe that's not really an exciting discovery, but it is a confirmation that maybe uh, that's how it is. Maybe the Cepheid variables that are younger are formed near the center and they spread across the galaxy and slowly move away and then eventually end up on the outskirts. We don't know why or how this happens, we just seem to be observing this on both sides of the galaxy. But the data from the study and also uh, follow-up studies will definitely help us discover what really is the shape of our galaxy. Right now, this is all a simulation, we don't really know what it looks like. We have no idea how many arms we have or how many arms our galaxy has. We don't know if these arms are more or less um, rigid or if they're sort of broken up into pieces. And we also don't really know if our galaxy is warped everywhere, um, as I've mentioned in one of the previous videos, because this is something we've discovered not so long ago. Or if it's only warped on one side and the other side is more or less flat and doesn't really have any signs of collisions or any other features. Now, it's possible that in the next few months, uh, other follow-up studies will also be able to discover other unusual objects by using a very similar technique but applying it to other types of stars. But even though this study mostly focused on the infrared light or the near-infrared light to detect the Cepheid variables, we could technically use other um, wavelengths of light as well, specifically the longer wavelengths. We could use radio waves, for example. And so it's very possible that in the next few years, we might be able to map this whole region very precisely by simply using these longer wavelengths of light and then by using machine learning to try to identify these objects that were not visible to us simple humans. And although it's unlikely we're going to discover something super unusual or super weird or something that we didn't really expect to find, it's still interesting to map this area because, I mean, it's our own galaxy and we might need to know more about our own backyard before we try to go and explore other worlds out there. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Check out the paper and the discovery in the description below and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting the channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.